Greetings friends, it's Mia. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if it is your first time visiting. I can't believe it has been over a month since I uploaded a video on YouTube. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I had intended to take things slowly. In my last video, if you happen to have caught it, I mentioned that I was just like, I don't know, I was just trying to get back into the swing of things when it came to YouTube and making videos and everything like that and having to juggle work and my obligations when it comes to family and doctor's appointments and just trying to figure out my way a little bit. But wow, I absolutely never expected that it would be over four weeks until I made it back here. And I'll be quite honest, I haven't even really watched many or any videos. I took a true YouTube break. But I truly do feel as though I needed the respite. I needed to take that step back to be able to rejuvenate and to get my passion and spirit up because I think I was truly and completely burnt out, not only from making videos, but from the hobby, from watching videos, from just pretty much everything. Like I was just feeling a total sense of burnout. Anyway, before I get too far into the weeds of that conversation, let me first talk about the beautiful baby that you are looking at right now. This is Ashton Laurel. Ashton is the Laura Sculpt by Bonnie Brown. This is the baby that I purchased at the Dolls of the World Expo show last June. And I love her to bits. She was brought to life by Ashton Bryant of Claire's Cuties, Reborn Dolls or Reborn Nursery, I'm not sure what she calls it, but I know it's Claire's Cuties, and the wonderful Ashton Bryant was responsible for painting and rooting this gorgeous baby girl. And if you have been here before, you know that Ashton has a twin sister, and I'm going to bring her on today as well. And I am totally obsessed with this outfit that Ashton is wearing today you will see it featured on her twin sister as well. I was so fortunate enough to find two of these sets in the same size at Marshall's and it's stunning. And the color, please, <laughs> like one of my favorite colors of all time, I wanna say it's a cross between deep lavender and light eggplant. And the top is a long sleeved crisscross sweater that has two buttons and it comes with matching bloomers in a ribbed cotton with ruffles around the thighs and then i put a ribbed knit cotton white long sleeved onesie on beneath it and i love the ruffled collar that goes all the way around and then she's got a sort of like a satiny I don't know if you'd call that satin but she's got a white bow tied around her head and I love this trick of using material and just tie it into a bow as opposed to using an actual headband that pulls I feel so much better about putting them or putting that type of headband on my dolls that have rooted hair because I always get so nervous using anything at all that tugs that would possibly or potentially even tug on their hair. So yeah, here is Ashton and this outfit is just gorgeous. Oh yeah, she's wearing um she's wearing ribbed cotton knee socks that have come down a bit and beige or taupe colored Mary Janes with they're like a pebble leather grain with a big bow across the front or across the top. And she's got her little bunny rabbit beside her. So this was technically her Easter outfit. 
and I had changed all my babies into outfits for Easter and then proceeded to not <laughs> bring them to you. So yeah, that's how things were going. That's how things were going. And before I change the camera angle for you, this is my new setup for filming videos here in the nursery. And that was something that was actually a problem for me, I guess you could say. The fact that I really didn't have a designated place to film my babies. So I set this up and I think it looks real cute. I can easily dismantle for when I want to use this desk for other purposes, which I do on occasion. I do use it for other things. But yeah, it's super easy. I just put the docketot on it and then I put a few little, I guess you could say collectibles and wooden toys and flowers and plants on it. I wanted to have a little bit of an eclectic touch here and give you something fun to look at. And so hopefully this will suffice. I have a little extra lighting above Ashton attached to the desk because the natural lighting in this room is a little lacking, but the desk is set up right beside the window. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And as I said, I will move the camera angle around so you won't have to stare at her in the same position and I'll move her around. But yeah, guys, so I hope that everyone has been doing well and that you have been having a healthy start to 2024. I can't believe we are already in the month of April. Like, I am mind blown, but I think we're all saying the same thing. Time seems to just be speeding up with an intensity that's almost scary to me. It's almost scary to me. So at first I thought I would um, discuss, like I said, where I've been. I've been working. I have been gathering my self together from having spent time away over the winter months. I've been getting back into the swing of real life and I must say, you know, being away for an extended period of time in, quote, vacation mode, unquote, it really does something to your brain. And it was a really good thing for me because we went down south where it was warmer and I am not a fan of the cold weather at all. In fact, I really despise the cold weather. The gray skies... I could do without like for the rest of my life. And I think that's been something for me that has become more prevalent the older I get. So yeah, one of the things I hadn't realized I disliked with a passion are the cold, gray, sunless skies of winter that we have in the Northeast. And while I was away, while I was down in Florida and traveling, we had sunny, warm skies. And I am someone that has experienced seasonal affective disorder, and it is triggered, generally speaking, by those cold, darker, grayer days. So yeah, while we were away, it was like a light switch was flipped. My SAD was practically gone. I think it was gone, actually. It was completely gone. And I felt alive again, and it was life as I preferred, life as I am most able to enjoy it and live it. And then we came home <laughs> because, you know, you can't stay away forever, right? So we came home, and within, oh my goodness, it wore off. I don't know, I want to say within a week to two weeks, I was right back in that fog, in that bog of gray skies and just feeling blah. And that definitely had an effect on me being like inspired to do anything with the hobby, with the dolls. And then I just started questioning everything. And I'll get into that a bit further 
when I bring Alina on because I don't want to make this video too, too long. But since it's been such a long time since I've been here to talk with you and chat and all that, I hope you don't mind if this runs a little over my usual video length. And I'm just shooting the breeze. I'm just shooting the breeze, like nothing prepared. The only topic is me just saying like what I've been going through. Anyway, let me go ahead and just give you another overview of Ashton before I get Alina. Okay, here's one more overview of this beautiful baby. I adore her, you guys. I really, really do. But I'm going to tell you guys something in just a few minutes that might actually shock you. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. All right, so I hope you have enjoyed seeing Ashton today. And bear with me. In just a moment, I'm going to have Alina seated here for you. And here she is, you guys. Here is gorgeous Alina Faith. She is also the Laura Sculpt by Bonnie Brown. And she was brought to life by Alina Antonova, a Russian artist whose work is absolutely incredible. And of course, Alina is in matching outfit and twinning with her twin sister, Ashton. And I think they both look just incredible in this gorgeous, you can even call it like a plum color, but not too deep, a light plum color. And yeah, I'm obsessed. And the difference here with Alina is that beneath her sweater, I have a white long sleeved gauze shirt with a ruffled collar that goes all the way around. She is wearing white leggings that go up to her thigh and white crib shoes with the little silver bells on them. I got them at the Dolls of the World Expo. But yeah, I love the shoes. I'm hoping to pick up another pair or two of shoes when I go to the Dolls of the World Expo this coming June. I'm super excited to be planning another trip there. So I mentioned that I was going to tell you guys a couple of things that might shock or surprise you. Things that were going through my mind over the past few months. And I think what I started to do with this time that I took off from YouTube and from engaging with the hobby is I started to look at things a bit more objectively and I made some personal revelations regarding how I've been handling things with the hobby and I wanted to make some changes. And one of the first things I did was begin to purge tons and tons of baby clothes that I was not using. I bagged up everything and brought it over to my local thrift store. I got rid of so much, but that's not what is so surprising. I'm getting to it, I promise. <laughs> um, so then I started to think about the dolls that I have and, you know, did I want to purge them as well? And I started to take stock of my collection and I realized that what was happening for me was I was starting to collect dolls of greater value that had more detailing. The artist's work was um, the type that had a higher price tag and I was enjoying the extra added realism that came along with those higher priced dolls. But I was also starting to realize that I didn't want to handle them a lot because of the fact that I didn't want to take a chance of anything happening to them, such as any rooted hair coming out or any paint rubbing off by my holding them or snuggling them. I began to see my collection as more of a display collection and I was really of two minds about that. I was like, I love looking at them so much. It brings me joy. But I started to disconnect from the comfort part of the hobby for me. 
So that said, I was beginning to question so many things about how I wanted to proceed with the hobby. I knew in my heart of hearts that I wasn't ready to just give it up and sell everything and just move on because I do truly love it. I do truly love it. But I was also starting to really like calculate the moves I'd made over the years, the money I had spent over the years. But I didn't waste a lot of time getting hung up on the money I've spent because I really believe that we need to have hobbies. We need to have things in our lives that bring us joy, that connect us to that lighter part of ourselves. But as I was just saying with the comfort, I was like, am I making a mistake by going for these expensive dolls, these really expensive dolls that, you know, I could inadvertently be rubbing their paint and or taking a chance that I'm messing up the mohair. And for a while I was like, I was like, no more babies with painted hair. I only want the realism of the mohair, da, da, da. But then I was like, wait, why? There's something to be said, or dolls with painted hair. There's something to be said for that because it takes one of the worries, one of the fear factors away from the equation, at least for me, at least for me. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to rethink my or I'm going to shift my thinking around the hair because I was like, hmm, maybe I do need to have a couple in my collection. And I do. I have Eloise, who is a staple. She is my love. I adore her. And I've been starting to put little bonnets and hats on her because she does have painted hair. And I feel like we all need that doll that we can put hats on without getting nervous or or those traditional headbands with the stretchy band without worrying, without having to worry about that. Um, so I have her, and then I have another baby that you haven't seen yet. Couple, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was like, those could be my comfort dolls. Those could be my version of a cuddle baby. Because I have tried like the actual cuddle babies without the arms and legs. And it's just not for me, at least not at this moment in time. I've had to learn that I change on a dime. <laughs> that every time I think I've figured out who I am in this hobby, I'm like, yeah, think again. Think again, yeah, because you don't know. <laughs> you don't know Jack. But the big shock, I think, at least for me, to reveal to you guys is that for about... A couple of days to a week, I had seriously considered selling all of my dolls and putting the money aside for one, like, super expensive, perhaps, or super lifelike, like, a silicone, probably, doll from an artist whose work I probably would not be able to afford had I not sold all of my dolls like sell them off put all that money into one account and then use that to buy like a joanna k a joanna k full-bodied silicone is a dream for me and i think joanna k is going to be at the dolls of the world expo and i am super excited to see her and i'm dreading it because i know me i know i'm going to fall head over heels with whatever she is selling. <laughs> and I know that it is out of my budget. Her dolls are going to be out of my budget. Anyway, I thought about that. Like I seriously thought, what if I do this? Because while I was doing all of this soul searching, I started to look around and I have a few babies up for sale now. They're not listed as of yet on reborns.com, but they will be. But um, I started to look around and I was like, I have too many. I have too many. I was getting that feeling like I need to just purge and have maybe one really, really realistic, nice doll and one 
comfort doll. That's what I was thinking. Like one comfort baby that maybe cost me a few hundred bucks with painted hair and that I can cuddle with and hold when I'm in the mood to hold a baby and one that I just dote on and buy all the goodies for and feature in my videos. And I really sat long and hard with that thought process. Like I had to just sit with it. And ordinarily, before I put any baby up for sale, I put it away. I put it up in the closet, in a blanket, in a box, and I see whether or not I miss having them in the nursery. And if not, then I know it's time to go. But I'm like, how am I gonna put up all of these babies? I won't have room in any closet for all of them. And the more I started to really seriously consider it, I was like, I don't think that's right for me. Because I had to remind myself how nervous I get with handling my most expensive dolls sometimes, not always, sometimes, and how my tendency is not to handle them. So what am I even doing thinking about getting a doll that's worth eight or $10,000 perhaps and being terrified of doing damage to it? Plus, you've probably noticed that I've moved away from silicones. I only have one right now in my collection and that is my little Ansley. And I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to have another silicone. I just won't do it. Partial silicone babies intrigue me. That could be something that is up and coming. I don't know. I'm going to the doll show with zero expectation. The only thing I hope to find is another awake or an awake baby. I do have two in my collection right now and the rest are sleeping babies, which I tend to gravitate toward, again, for the realism factor. But I'd like to find an awake baby, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so that's the big shock. Like I was thinking, okay, they're all going. They're all gonna be put up for sale on Reborns and people are gonna be like, holy cow, are you done? And I didn't wanna be done, but that sensation of just being overwhelmed with babies and you know, seeing five and six babies lined up in my crib, it was just like, this is too much. This is too much for me. Maybe this isn't the type of collector I'm meant to be. And then I just, you know, I thought about it and I just said, no, at least not now. I mean, it just, I can't commit to getting rid of these dolls. I can't commit to it at this moment in time. Is that something that could perhaps be in the future for me? I don't know, guys, maybe, perhaps, but I don't know. I don't know how likely that is. Another thing I was considering is totally giving up my YouTube channel. Not taking it down, but retiring completely and not doing anything, not uploading a video once a month or once every other week or as needed. Um, I was like, yeah, I think I'm done with YouTube even with watching videos. I was feeling that the community had changed over the past year. I still feel like it has changed. And I was like, yeah, I don't know that I belong here anymore. So like, yeah, I think I'm gonna be done with YouTube. I was like so convinced of that. And once again, I was like, but am I, am I done? Because I have made wonderful friends in this community I have felt connected with people that I don't know, who watch my videos, who comment on my videos, who are kind enough to care and send me notes and things of that nature. And I was like, am I done with that really? I did remove the pressure, obviously, of having to come on once or twice a week and bring you new babies and buy new things. I removed that pressure from myself and it was a huge weight off of my mind and my shoulders and um that helped that definitely did help but i'm not done i'm not done with making videos and i want to still be in part an active member of this community how active it has yet to be determined but i do still want to be here i do still want to share my dolls with you i'm hoping that by creating this new filming space 
I'll be more apt to film because I think a lot of the time for me, it was like picking the right spot. Like, where's the sun coming in? Where can I sit the baby in? What setting, you know, such and such a thing. I still plan to do uh, going on a walk video. So you'll see my babies in the stroller. I still plan to hopefully take them out in the car seat. So you'll see that. And out on the patio on the nicer days. I love to film outside. So all of that will be up and coming. But yeah, um, hopefully this setting will also help me to make more videos on days when none of those things are viable options. So yeah, guys, I think overall, um, I had to do a lot of soul searching. I had to find out what I truly felt about the dolls and the hobby and um, my place in it. Um, I also learned that sometimes we need a break just so we can stop the spending frenzy because I felt as though I was getting caught up in that a bit. Um, just buying this and buying that and buying the other and seeing what someone has and um, just collecting these things to go along with the hobby, not just clothing, but accessories. And I put the brakes on it a little bit. And I've started to take like a beat, a heartbeat, a pause between deciding what I want and determining what I need in order to enjoy the hobby. I don't know, guys, that's really it. I know I've just been like yammering on and on and on and hopefully all of this went in a cohesive direction and I wasn't all over the place, but I feel as though I needed to catch up. I needed to tell you guys all that I had been considering and going through as far as the hobbies concerned and the dolls and where I netted out or what I or what I have discovered about myself and I'm still evolving. I think that's the bottom line. I feel like with this hobby or with life in general, we are still evolving, even at the ripe old age that I am now of 61, soon to be 62. I'm still learning about myself. I'm still discovering what works and what doesn't for me. And every time I come on and tell you guys something, it's a snapshot of where I am at this moment in time. Everything is TBD, to be determined. But as of now, I'm here. I'm hoping again with the fact that the warmer weather hopefully will be back soon and I will feel more like doing things and going out and filming. We'll see. I truly hope that you have enjoyed seeing the twins today. I know I didn't bring them on together, but you get the gist. And I hope you enjoyed seeing my new little, I don't know what you call it. It's not a changing station really because I don't love doing changing videos. I feel like I'm just all over the place. Not that I haven't been in this video, but I'm just not a big fan of them. Perhaps I will do them here. We'll see. But I hope you enjoyed seeing this little setup and the twins. And I hope that you will stay close because there are babies in my collection that you haven't seen. And I'll be bringing them to you. I definitely will. As well as the ones you know about. They'll be back too. So please do stay close, stay safe, and stay healthy. I hope you know that you have never been that far from my thoughts, each one of you that is a viewer, a subscriber, and a Dolly friend. I've been thinking about you guys. I've been missing you. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll be here when I come back again real soon. Love you guys so much for watching. Take care.